This video is brought to you by Lord of Maps, creators of some of the most breathtaking maps you'll ever find. And they have a holiday sale going on right now. Stick around after the video for a special discount code for my viewers for lordofmaps.com. They were cruel oppressors over the men of Middle-earth. While their numbers would eventually dwindle, their people continued making an impact on Middle-earth well into the Third Age, including three ringwraiths, a queen of Gondor, and the mouth of Sauron. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the Black Numenorians. The foundation of the Black Numenorians begins around 2221 of the Second Age. It was that year when Tar Ankaliman became the 14th ruler of Numenor, and the realm would become divided. There were the faithful Numenorians and the King's Men. The larger of the two factions, the King's Men, turned their backs upon the Valar and the Eldar, growing more and more bitter at their perceived curse of mortality. The King's Men begin setting themselves above the men of Middle-earth. They make the haven of Umbar into a great fortress and place a heavy tribute on the men of places like Harad. Of the King's Men settlements, we are told that Umbar is the northernmost. Because the shadow lies heavily upon their hearts, the King's Men greatly fear death and seek to delay it by all means possible. These attempts to escape the fate of men actually brings death upon them sooner as the lifespans of the kings of Numenor become more brief. They fill the lands of Numenor with great tombs to preserve the memory of their dead. Meanwhile, the living ease their fears by living more and more decadent lives, drinking and feasting and cladding themselves in silver and gold. It is likely during or shortly before these years that three of these Numenorean lords who lived in settlements of Middle-earth would be approached by Sauron. They are corrupted by the Dark Lord, and each given a ring of power. As with the other six ring bearers, they would become mighty in their day, kings, sorcerers, and warriors. They would indeed avoid the doom of man, and their lives would be prolonged. However, their bodily forms would begin to fade, until they are made entirely into wraiths slaves under the dominion of Sauron's One Ring. Around 2251, these men reappear as the Nazgul. For nearly a thousand years, the King's Men enjoy the favor of the Kings of Numenor. However, in 3177, one of the faithful finally takes the scepter once again. This man is Tar Palantir, the 24th King of Numenor. He wishes to return Numenor to a state of friendship with the Valar, but the majority of Numenorians still hold to the policies of the King's Men. Tar Palantir's younger brother, Gimilkad, is among the King's Men and takes leadership of the group in opposition to his brother. After Tar Palantir's death, his daughter Miriel is usurped by her cousin Farazon, who forces her into marriage in an attempt to legitimize his taking of the throne. During Ar Farazan's rule, Sauron and his servants attack the realms of the King's Men in Middle-earth. Sauron also declares himself King of Men, Lord of the Earth, and many similar titles, offending the proud and arrogant Numenorians. Finally, in 3261, Ar Farazan launches a great fleet which he had spent five years preparing. They land at the Haven of Umbar, and march north toward Mordor. It is said that their might and splendor was so great that Sauron's own servants deserted him. Knowing he could not defeat the Numenorians by mere strength, Sauron takes on his fair form and humbles himself before the king, who takes him back to Numenor as his hostage. Sauron's knowledge and cunning allows him to begin corrupting the Numenorians from within. Sauron becomes Arpharazan's chief counselor, and the king's men, who were already turning toward darkness, were plunged into it. Sauron converts many Numenorians to the worship of Melkor, the first Dark Lord. He convinces Arpharazan to cut down the white tree, and in its place, they build a great temple. There they would burn the white tree and perform human sacrifice of the faithful Numenorians. 
Sauron corrupts the hearts and minds of the king's men so deeply that they brutally oppress the men of Middle-earth during this period. Despite Sauron's promises, the king's men do not escape death. In fact, they are plagued by all sorts of illnesses and mental afflictions, to the point that they curse themselves in their agony. The Valar eventually send a warning to Numenor, and many Numenorians fall on their faces in great fear, and some even repent of their actions. However, it is said that Sauron's mastery over them was so complete that he could walk about the land, setting man against man and causing them to slay one another. When Arpharazan finally attempts his doomed quest to claim immortality by force, the island of Numenor is destroyed by Iluvatar. Farazan and his fleet are destroyed while nine ships of the faithful escape the destruction of their home. However, there still remain those of the king's men who dwelt in Middle-earth. It is they who would ever after be known as the Black Numenorians, for they worshipped Sauron. These men maintain control of Umbar and harbor a deep hatred for the faithful, especially those who would come to be the Gondorians. While they are mostly mysterious figures, we do know a few Black Numenorians by name. Two of the earliest Black Numenorian lords are Herumor and Fuinur. They are described as both mighty and evil and rise to great power amongst the Haradrim. It's possible that these lords are among those Black Numenorians who enter into the service of Sauron and fight for him during the War of the Last Alliance. However, as we know, Sauron would be defeated in this war, losing his ring and his bodily form. This marks a decline in the Black Numenorians as a people. Their numbers dwindle and they mostly merge with the men of Middle-earth, with whom they shared lands. Though their line would decrease, their hatred of Gondor would not. One of the most famous among the Black Numenorians lived in the early Third Age, Around this time, the 12th king of Gondor, Taranon Falastur, marries Beruthiel, who was a black Numenorian. We are not told what brings about this union, and Beruthiel is described as being nefarious, solitary, and loveless. It's possible this was a move made in an attempt to maintain a peaceful relationship with the men of the south. Taranon would bring her to his house, where the Anduin meets the sea, south of Pelargir. However, Beruthiel hated everything about the sea and refused to dwell there. Instead, she lives in the king's house in the capital of Osgiliath. It is said she decorated the courtyard with strange and disturbing sculptures, while the inside of the house was mostly bare. Tolkien tells us that Beruthiel loathed cats, but that they became attracted to her for that exact reason. After they begin to follow the queen, she begins enslaving and torturing them. She would end up commanding a total of 10 cats, nine black and one white. She would send the black cats to spy on the men of Gondor, and from them she would learn many dark secrets about the realm and its people. As for the white cat, she would send it to spy on the black cats. We are told she could converse with her cats and even read their memories. Eventually, Taranon would exile his queen, placing her on a boat cast adrift at sea. Her ship is last seen flying past Umbar with a cat at the masthead and another as a figurehead on the prow. Taranon also has Beruthiel's name erased from the Book of the Kings. However, her legend would live on. The people of Gondor would not soon forget Beruthiel and her cats, and even more than 2,000 years later, Aragorn makes a reference to her as the Fellowship is on their journey. Taranon's successor, his nephew Ernil I, would later capture the havens of Umbar and drive the Black Numenorean lords into exile. However, 82 years later, these lords would lead the Haradrim in retaking the fortress of Umbar and killing King Kiriandil, the son of Ernil. Finally, we arrive at perhaps the most notable black Numenorean, the Mouth of Sauron. We are told he is a man of great stature who enters into Sauron's service when the Dark Tower first rose again. 
The use of the word again points to this occurring sometime between 2942 and 2953 of the Third Age. In Sauron's service, he learns sorcery and comes into the confidence of the Dark Lord. He is described as the Lieutenant of Barad-dûr. It's hard to say how old the mouth of Sauron was when we meet him in The Return of the King, but we are told that by this time he had forgotten his original name. There's some debate that it could very well have been the mouth of Sauron who comes to Erebor, seeking news of Baggins of the Shire. However, I and many others believe this more likely to have been a ring wraith, as we are told Sauron would trust no others with seeking the One Ring. The mouth of Sauron emerges from the lands of Mordor to negotiate with the army led by Aragorn to the Black Gate. There rode a tall and evil shape, mounted upon a black horse, if horse it was, for it was huge and hideous, and its face was a frightful mask, more like a skull than a living head, and in the sockets of its eyes and in its nostrils there burned a flame. The rider was robed all in black, and black was his lofty helm, yet this was no ring wraith, but a living man, the lieutenant of the Tower of Barad-dûr he was and his name is remembered in no tale, for he himself had forgotten it. And he said, I am the mouth of Sauron. Then he shows Gandalf, Aragorn, and the others the mithril coat, among other items belonging to Frodo, implying the hobbit had been captured by Sauron. Then he presents Sauron's terms. These are the terms, said the messenger and smiled as he eyed them one by one. The rabble of Gondor and its deluded allies shall withdraw at once beyond the Anduin, first taking oaths never again to assail Sauron the Great in arms, open or secret. All the lands east of Anduin shall be Sauron's forever solely. West of the Anduin, as far as the Misty Mountains and the Gap of Rohan, shall be tributary to Mordor, and men there shall bear no weapons, but shall have leave to govern their own affairs. But they shall help to rebuild Isengard, which they have wantonly destroyed. And that shall be Sauron's, and there his lieutenant shall dwell. Not Saruman, but one more worthy of trust. In this moment, they realize that the mouth of Sauron envisions himself lording over Isengard, setting himself as a tyrant with the men of the West as his slaves. As Gandalf utterly rejects Sauron's terms, the mouth of Sauron retreats back through the Black Gate and unleashes the armies of Barad-dûr upon the Free Peoples. We don't know for certain the ultimate fate of the mouth of Sauron. It is very likely that he, along with a great many of Sauron's most dedicated servants, perished in the assault of the Moranon. Some theorize that if he had survived, he would have likely become a leader among Sauron's retreating forces, perhaps even making his way back to the old black Numenorean stronghold of Umbar. Though we know that Aragorn does make peace with those from the south, perhaps making the presence of the mouth of Sauron even more unlikely. From this point on, we hear nothing more of the black Numenorians. It's possible that their race died out completely and was no longer able to corrupt the men of Harad or plague the realm of Gondor. Though they would be quite few in number compared to their earlier days as the King's Men, there would be at times those among the Black Numenorians who would make their mark on the history of Middle-earth. Now if you're looking for a great holiday gift for the Middle-earth fan in your life, visit lordofmaps.com. Originally hand-drawn, these maps feature locations all around the world in a fantasy style sure to be a great conversation piece. And right now, they have a buy one, get one 50% off sale for the holidays. Or you can use the code NERDOFMAPS to save 15% off your order. Visit lordofmaps.com today. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Jim Limber Davis, Lissa Me The Cinda, Dane Ragnarsson, Sky Carcass, Zetrock, Grand Strategy Nerd, The Dark Haired One, Salim Rahman, Slide Belts, Wyland, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.